all 12 jurors and six alternates are seated for former President Trump's so-called hush money trial. Opening statement set to begin this morning after an appellate judge rejected Trump's latest request to uh, halt the trial. The New York Post is reporting Michael Avenatti, the imprisoned former lawyer of Stormy Daniels, is, quote, happy to testify in Trump's defense. He says he has been in contact with Trump's legal team. Meanwhile, House Democrats have introduced a bill that would strip Secret Service protection from convicted felons sentenced to prison for at least a one-year term, a bill directed at Donald Trump should he be found guilty. Now they want to remove his Secret Service uh, security, Liz Peek. Your reaction? Uh, look, this is just one more step in their ongoing uh, determination to humiliate and abuse this former president, Maria. Yeah. I, I have to say, I, I just can't get over the lengths to which Democrats are willing to go, to which the White House is willing to go to humiliate Donald Trump, all in the service of making him look weak and battered and unable and unfit to run for president again. This is an entirely political trial, another one on top of the horrible Letitia James trial. She's not letting go of that one. Bragg isn't going to let go of this one. I think most Americans are watching this, and they are just horrified by the spectacle of a man who basically served very well as president now having the entire legal establishment of the federal government arrayed against him and the New York state government. It's pretty yeah. appalling. Well, they want to have that narrative. One, one candidate is facing 91 indictments. The other candidate is not. That's and that's, right. the, that's the point Hillary Clinton made the other day in an interview. So it's working for them. Yeah. Except that, except that Donald Trump is getting a lot of attention, a lot of airtime. Some Democrats are beginning to push back and say, yeah. whoa, maybe he's a little too much in the limelight. But the New York Times this morning ran a big column by Maggie Hammerman, no fan of Donald Trump, no. basically talking about how he looks diminished. He looks like he's no longer in control. Mm -hmm. That's what this is all about, presenting to the world a beaten and bruised man, as opposed to a strong leader, which, by the way, most voters think he is compared to Joe Biden. Yeah, for sure. And New York Attorney General Letitia James, as you just mentioned, asking the judge in Trump's civil fraud case to void the $175 million bond payment that he already posted. She claims that she's questioning whether Knight Specialty Insurance Company has the funds to back it up. So, Chris, he puts the bond. First, they tried to get him to put up $475 million in bond. Then a judge cuts it to $175 million. He gets the money. He pays the bond. And now she's trying to get the judge to void it out. I mean, I, I, you can't write this. It's unbelievable. This weaponized, you know, uh, charges is just absolutely ridiculous. And the idea, I mean, it's really despicable, the concept of taking away Secret Service detail from a past president is just, I think people are seeing this for what it is, which is just kind of uh, weaponizing our criminal justice system. Ultimately, I think it's going to backfire because I do believe ultimately Trump is going to be seen as strong and angry and righteous, which is not yeah. a normal position for him to be dealing from. So I think he'll be in the, I think this will ultimately benefit him despite right. the incredible tribulations. Well, they're making him the victim, Chris. Absolutely. Absolutely they are. Yeah, and, and, you know, we also want to hear what the Supreme Court has to say, Liz, because the SCOTUS is going to, set to be set to hear arguments on Trump's presidential immunity uh, case on Thursday to determine whether, in fact, he should be immune from prosecution by special counsel Jack Smith's election interference investigation. Trump posted this on Truth Social. If they take away my presidential immunity, they take away crooked Joe Biden's presidential immunity. <laughs> How is that going to square, Liz? <laughs> well, I assume that's a veiled threat that if Trump wins in, a, in November, guess what? Guess who's next uh, uh, going to be looking at federal charges? Look, I think this is a horrific idea that presidents should be, uh, look, they, they have to obey the law, but the fact that a, a successor or a competitor can go after them legally for actions they took while president, imagine what that could open up, Maria. I mean, this may not be a very good rationale or a very good case on which to hang that. But I do think the whole question of presidential immunity is somewhat is somewhat tricky. And, and I think Trump, Trump's lawyers are going to have a pretty good case to make. I want to say one more thing about Michael Avenatti. If I were the Trump team, I would be very careful about mm. enlisting the help 
of Michael Avenatti, who lies for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and who cannot be trusted. It's a great point that you make, Liz. I'm, I'm sure they're thinking that way, but you've got to put that out there because yeah. it's very uh, weird that he now claims that he's ready to testify in Trump's favor, Chris. It's, I think that, that would be the last perhaps witness we would ever call, right? Don't worry, Michael Avenatti is going to come from federal prison and save the day. Yeah, it's, right. it, the concept is absurd. I, I think, yeah. again, I, I think uh, we're right on, Liz is right on, say, be very careful for what you hope for there.